Hey, this is Mike, the co-owner of the Eversense Barbershop in Mississauga. Today I'll be cutting my boy Jack. Today we'll be doing a six on top, high taper fade all around. And we'll be doing a number two and a half on the beard and trim the middle a little bit. And we're trying to keep uh, the beard pointy and keep the mustache as natural as possible and just line it up underneath. So we're gonna start with a number six guard for Mandis. So we're gonna do a six on top for Jag over here. So whenever you do a shave down, you want to go in multiple directions. Sometimes you can't catch all the hairs just going straight back and forth, depending on the growth pattern of the client's hair. So right now I'm just going straight back and forth. Then I'm going to comb the hair down again. Then I'm going to go a little bit sideways. Just to catch the hair again. You always want to hear for the hair. You always want to make sure you're cutting something. Comb it down again, now I'm gonna go the other way. See, I can still hear the hair. Now I'm gonna go back and forth again. For Jack's hair over here, his hair grows sideways and down. So I want to hit it against the grain as much as possible, so going against the hair direction. So I want to make sure to get all the hair so there's no uneven seeds in the hair. And this hair over here goes a little bit sideways, so I'm going to comb it down that way. I'm going to go against the grain. Pretty much when you do shave downs, when we do a pass one way, pretty much it's just going through the head, like at least like one rotation around. So pretty much just one pass around the head. And then you want to kind of always do multiple passes. Because sometimes the teeth of the hair doesn't catch all the hair all at once, depending on the hair growth. Because some guys' hair it goes sideways, this way, this way. So you always want to attack it. You'll get the best hit like against the grain. So going against how the hair grows. In this, in this case, the hair grows this way. We're gonna go against the grain. Over here, his hair naturally goes a little bit sideways, so we're gonna go against the grain a bit. And you always want to follow through with a comb just to straighten out the hair. So you kind of guide your guide the clipper. Jag, your hair grows fast, bro. Yeah. Holy. <laughs> it's only one week. So Jag's one of my weekly clients that I see. He's one of my regulars. And it's just crazy how his hair grows so fast. So now I'm going to do my number three guard. My number three guard. I'm just going to break down any bulk out here. We're going to try to keep this area as dark as possible. So I'm just going to go straight up and down on the hair. I'm not trying to dig it into his head. I'm trying to flick it off the head, so the widest parts of the head. So I'm trying to keep this, these areas dark. So just up, straight up and down. I'm trying to blend it into the number six on top. As you can tell, it looks a little bit blended. It's pretty much you fade into the existing layer, which is the number six. And just to even get a little bit more blend into it, we're gonna open up to like a three and a half guard.
So for our first guideline, I'll be using my T outliner. We're pretty much gonna start our guideline from the top of the brow bone here until this part of the ear. Because we're gonna keep the sideburns pointed, I'm gonna block it off right on this part of the ear. So I like to personally hold the trimmer. I like to, when I make my zero guideline, I like to go up and down this way and not cut into it. So I find like when I cut into it, um, sometimes it leaves a scratch mark uh, on the scalp. Sometimes it gets even closer than, uh, than going against it. And then it creates like a line that's almost impossible to take out. So I personally, I'm not a fan of doing it. So I personally like to go up and down and kind of flick it flick it off at the end to kind of make that line a little more easier to take out, opposed to scratching it in, and sometimes that, hard, that line is harder to, to remove. So now we're gonna start on the back. I'm gonna start my, my guard line, maybe about like an inch and a half, an inch and a half up. As on the other side, we're gonna start our, our line, our zero line from the top of the brow bone here, all the way to, not the top of the ear, kind of in between, right here. And we're gonna stop it towards where this corner is here. So now I'm gonna use my uh, wall magic clip I'm gonna make my second guard line, which is gonna be my, my 0.5 or my open guard, one inch above my, my original guard line. Okay. Start with that guy. I'm gonna do the same thing on the back myself like about a good inch between my my liner my initial guideline so my zero guard same thing here about just about an inch right over here So now for me, I like to tackle my liner line first. So we're gonna do that with the magic clips. I'm gonna keep in the halfway position. And then I'm gonna close it to remove that initial guideline. So it's a little bit of the half. And I'm gonna try to take out that initial guideline with my, with my wall uh, magic clip closed. We're working underneath our, initial, our, uh, our half, or 0.5. So I'm not trying to make any new lines to make my life hard. Same thing with the back. We're going to go halfway on the magic card. So halfway, not fully. In between closed and open. Do it close. Try to remove that initial guideline with a T-liner. For me, over here, we keep it straight. Uh, that's kind of typically how I do my high tapers. So my thought process right now, I'm just trying to work underneath my initial guideline. So over here, we started with our liner line. We went open over here, just about like maybe give or take an inch. 
and I remember just kind of working to kind of erase this line, but work underneath our initial half half guard. Next, I'm going to use my zero guard by Andis. Pretty much, what I'm going to I'm going to hit it zero close. Halfway open, we're gonna bring it up a little bit higher. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm stretching my zero guard. Uh, I'm only bringing up the line. So now I'm kind of doing a different technique where we're closed. I'm bringing it up like about three millimeters or so, and then I'm opening up slightly again. I'm, I'm bringing that line a little bit more higher, and I'm gonna finish it off with like open. I'm kind of blend into it. Uh, most important thing about doing like a, a back taper is that you don't want to go past the occipital bone here. So I don't want like the taper going all the way up here. So I'm gonna flick off and try, try to transition right underneath like this bump over here. So now I'm gonna go zero open. And I'm gonna flick it in into the hair. I'm trying to stand underneath the occipital bone here. Pretty much I'm flicking out. We're keeping it straight up and down here. And we're coming we're coming right out. Essentially what we're trying to do is trying to soften up that soften up, soften it up so we're not trying to create any new guidelines as much as possible. Good. So you always want to double check with the mirror as well when you're fading. Sometimes your, your eyes play games with you, but the mirror never lies to you. So we're still gonna touch it up a little bit. So right now we're gonna start on the side here. So we do the same technique, so I'm gonna use zero close. So essentially we're gonna go zero close, halfway, then open, so I'm just gonna stretch it up. So right now I'm trying to bring it up a little bit. I'm working small controlled movements. I'm not trying to go too wild with it. The thing about tapers too, you don't want to go beyond like past the ear. They look too much more like a fade. We're trying to keep this area pretty much dark. So I'm going to go halfway with my zero guard. Kind of bring that line up a little bit more higher. Maybe about three, four millimeters or so. So I'm pushing the ear down, just giving myself a little bit more surface area to work on this part of the fade. And this part of the fade, I'm using the, like the last three, four teeth on the clipper on the right hand side. And we're gonna go zero guard open. I'm just gonna flick it right in. So we're gonna go straight up and down. We're not trying to curve it in because I don't want to make a line up here. So we're holding the this part flush on the head. And we're going straight up and down. And we're flicking out of that. It's a little bit heavy here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my one and a half guard and I'm just gonna angle it just to kind of remove a little bit of excess bulk. So I'm holding it on an angle. So it's it's not really cutting too much of the hair up here. So now we remove a little bit of the bulk back there so it doesn't look so, so heavy and so dark. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna do zero close, halfway open. So I'm just gonna be chipping my way upwards. I'm 
halfway. Same thing here, I'm gonna push this ear down to give myself a little bit more surface area. And I'm gonna open it up all the way. I'm gonna comb the hair down. So we're going against the grain. So we're gonna go nice and flush on the head. We're not gonna dig into it. I'm gonna use this flat part to go flat on the head. Same thing here. We're gonna remove some of the bulk back here as well. Leave my like one and a half open. I'm not keeping it flush on the head because I don't want to make a line up here. So I'm just using the first couple teeth here and it was kind of grazing the hair. So now I'm gonna use my number one guard in open position. We just want to break down a little bit of that bulk again up here. So we're just gonna stretch it upwards. Same thing, go nice straight up and down. So working with Jag's hair, uh, his hair is, is quite directional. So his hair is trying to, so when you comb it this way, his hair naturally wants to flow backwards. So we always want to make sure to kind of get everything, use the fine side of the comb, comb everything down. Um, and always try to attack the hair against the grain as possible. His hair is very dense and very thick. So you, you want to do multiple passes on the head and make sure you get all the hair because with guys with thick hair, it's sometimes hard for the machine to kind of run through the hair. This makes it a little bit more difficult, but not hard, but for, for new barbers, it's a little more tricky. So you always wanna make sure to kind of go through the hair as much as possible and kind of remove any of the bulk. You don't wanna just like boom, 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 and then you're out, you know, so. So I'm using these uh, magnetic guards. So on Jag's hair, for me personally, I like to use um, the Andes guards by uh, the magnetic guards. Uh, they work really good for me. I really like it on my Andis Masters. So now we're gonna break a little bit more bulk. So we're gonna use the, the one uh, magnetic guard by Andis. We're gonna kind of flick this part off. So now we're gonna comb it down again. So now for him. Because his head dips, so the, the tricky things about doing tapers, and so depending on the head shape, his head actually dips here, so I have to scoop this part out and kind of blend this part up. So I'm gonna use my same guard. So whenever I do a taper fade, I prefer to go a little bit more higher. That's just my style. But typically for tapers and stuff, as long as you're not taking it above the occipital bone, I think you're good. Uh, for, for most tapers though, you wanna start maybe like about an inch where the nape starts here. It's about an inch, and maybe an inch for like your number one, and maybe another inch for your number two, to kind of stay underneath that. But for me, I like more of like a uh, drastic effect. So I like to bring my, my tapers a little bit more higher. I personally find for me it, it pops more and it grows out nice in my opinion so yeah so line mark for the head for the rear tapers you always want to stay underneath the occipital bone here and for line marks for the tapers it's like you don't want the fade to go around the ear because that look more like a fade a traditional fade so you want to keep it relatively darker in this area so having that said you want to find like the widest part of the head which is the parietal ridge here and you want to flick it off and over, cause typically over here, why people like to keep tapers because like some people's heads like dip, so you want to keep this back area dark. Uh, so you don't want to blend it too much, or then it looks like more like a fade. So you want to keep this area like nice and light, like off the widest parts of the head, which would be the parietal ridge here and the occipital bone. So you want to flick it off there on the, on the widest parts of the head and keep everything dark.
But now I'm just gonna break a little bit more bulk over here. So I'm using my number two guard by Andis. Hey Jack, how's your day going? Pretty good. Good. How's everything in the real estate market? Saw anything recently? Me. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> so you guys gonna go check out some houses today? Yeah, we're Okay, okay. Jeez. Are you guys going out this weekend? Uh, no. Is he going with the flow? Yes, sir. Is the traffic bad this morning? Uh, no, it's okay. Is that right? So for me, I'm gonna break a little bit of bulk on the hairline. So for, for, for Jag's hair, usually rocks it down. So I wanna take any like the loose ends because hair is actually very directional. It's really easy to move. It naturally wants to move this way. So right now I'm just gonna kind of take my number two guard and just kind of kind of flick off any like the loose ends. Just so when I line it up, it's a lot more crisp, a lot more neater. Because when some guys they take their bangs, uh, make their bangs too long, then it's, it moves a lot. So I'm trying to limit as much as movement on the hairline to make it crispier for him. I take it down with a number two, and I'm not digging in the head. I'm just like, once I hear a little bit of the hair come off, I'm, I'm flicking it out. And I always want to comb it down and kind of see what we've done. So now the line that we're going to work with his head is pretty much at this 0.5 line created with the magic lip. So I'm going to take it out with my Andis Masters. Uh, I'm going to use my Masters in the halfway position. And I'm just going to etch that line. So by etching, I mean I'm just using the last three or four teeth on my blade. And I'm using it to kind of just kind of pinpoint where I want to hit. In this case, I just want to, I prefer to do that than hit the, than use the full blade. Now we're using the Andis Masters in the open position. The halfway position. So I like to start one side, then one side. So I started in the middle, and I'm gonna work towards my right side. So when I fade with the, the Andis Masters, I personally like the Masters a lot because as an extended throw, uh, the halfway position on the Andis Masters is equivalent to a, a wall uh, magic clip in the open position. Uh, so pretty much to remove that initial line, I'm, I'm pretty much starting with the halfway. And then when I open it up, the Andis Masters in the open position is longer than a number, uh, than a zero guard close. It's a little bit longer than that. I would say maybe a zero guard halfway. Uh, but it really depends on like if you zero gapped your machine or not. But for me, I didn't really adjust this too much. It's pretty much stock. So in the halfway position for me, takes out my, uh, my half line on the, on the wall magic clip. So right now we're just kind of etching the line, trying to massage the line out. Not trying to go too high with it. Uh, Jag's hair is, is quite thick. Some of his hair is actually bunched. So I'm using the, the first uh, parts of the blade just to kind of get any heavy spots in the hair. Because not everyone's hair grows all in the same consistency and, and all in the same thing, in all directions. So sometimes you'll have hairs that kind of grow closely together and other hairs that grow more spaced apart.
Jack, man. What's up with the market, man? What's the market? Yeah. This is a really quick, not enough demand out there. Large You think it's going to increase in the summertime? Sure, it is. Yeah? So now, before we move on to the lineup, I'm gonna attack the beard. So with Jag over here, I use a zero in the close position on the mustache. And I'm gonna open it halfway towards the end so it's not too light over there. Right. We're just gonna open it all the way up to one and a half, kind of flick this up. Back of his beard, we're gonna run with two and a half. So I'm gonna open it up to my number two in the open position. Are you using a two bear? Uh, for him, it's just the number he likes. So pretty much a number two keeps it like more tame, so his hair is not too frizzy on the side. But it really depends on client to client. So for Jag, we like to run like number two and a half on the beard to keep it nice and clean and tidy, but still wants to keep it relatively dark. Uh, once you start going to like, depending on the hair texture, and hair, uh, once you go under number, number two, it gets a little bit like light. So for him, we run about like a number two behind the ear. And going against the grain, always want to comb it. And for him too, we keep the, the middle here a little bit longer. So I'm gonna blend it into the middle. I'm gonna comb the hair back. I'm gonna use my two in the open position. I'm gonna go with the grain. I'm gonna comb it back again. And I'm just gonna come off the chin. I'm gonna flick it out. Over here, it's gonna thin the hair in the bottom of the neck. So pretty much I'm bunching all the hair together. So pretty much I'm kind of making it easier for me to kind of run it against the number two and a half and I'm flicking it out to kind of blend it together. Gets all those like loose ends so then we keep all of the length here like longer. So now for him, we're gonna shape up the middle of the beard. So we're gonna comb the direction the hair naturally falls, so it's like downwards. Then we're just gonna hang, chop off any like the loose ends here. So for Jag, for me personally, I like to use the wall uh, magic clip when I do freehand work. So right now I'm using my <laughs> <laughs> my mom magic with the freehand. This is more of a, a surgical blade. So the blade here tapers a lot more, so I feel like it's more precise when I freehand. All right, so I'm about to pull out my ever since Dyson blow dryer. So I'm pulling my Dyson blow dryer, my ever since Dyson blow dryer. Just playing with y'all. <laughs> but, uh, but for real though, it's legit. <laughs> Just gonna pull my Andes Tio liner. Personally, I like it for, for doing lineups. Uh, I feel like the blade is pretty wide. The power's always been the most consistent for me. I've been using this for about like 
five years now. It's been pretty good to me. Um, I feel like the Power Wars is good. I use it, so I don't have multiple liners. I use liners for both the liners I do have. I use them for like shaving down and for lineup. So just like in the last video, whenever you want to do a lineup, you want to comb the hair downwards, kind of straighten it out. So for me, I like to always start through the middle. So I like to keep one hand on the head just to stabilize the head. And I use my middle finger where my liner is to kind of stabilize as well. Because if I was just lining um, freehand, there's a lot more movement where you can kind of control the movement and add more of a consistent cut to kind of stabilize the head and kind of get in control and, and use different parts of your hand and parts of the client's face to kind of stabilize. Very important. So to, to avoid pushing like the hairlines back, you always want to assess your client first and see how the hair, natural hair pattern grows initially. Uh, for Jack, he's a longtime client of mine for the past like almost decade now, so I know how his hairline is. But whenever you, you, you line people and how to avoid pushing the hairlines back, because you always want to, before cutting, the, cutting someone's hairline, you always want to assess how it grows. Some guys' hairlines go sideways, sideways, more oval. One side's more oval on one side, it kind of creates a triangle. So you want to talk to your client. Some clients prefer to have their hairlines sharp as possible. Other hairlines prefer to uh, have it more on the natural side. This is something you'll have to establish uh, in your consultation with your client, especially if it's a new client and you don't know how he usually gets his haircut. Um, so you always want to double check and ask your client first before pushing a hairline back. Every client's a little bit more different, but for Jag, we want to achieve like a really sharp hairline. So I'm not really pushing it too much, but I just want to create as much sharp line within the means. So his natural hairline is pretty straight regardless. Um, oh, yeah. So, so whenever we do lineups, uh, you don't want to press your liner too, too deep into the, the client's skin because they end up uh, having the client bleed on you. So for me personally, so when I do Jag's hairline, his hair naturally moves this way. And sometimes when I push just straight on the hair, I mean like when I dab into the hair like this, his hair wants to kind of slide, slide to the side. So when guys have directional like hairlines, you want to go swipe against it to catch as much of the hair as possible. So in this case, I'm swiping more to the, to the right of the hair to straighten out the hair more because the hair naturally wants to go this way. And I'm going against it to help straighten it out. To get to achieve like a sharper hairline. And whenever you do hairlines, you always want to stand in front of the client to ensure that it's straight. Yeah. So it might. So for beginners, this is kind of rule of thumb when I started barbering. Uh, when I do lineups as well, typically when you do the section over here for the lineup, typically you don't want to go past the eyebrow. That's how I was taught. And for most people that works like 90% of the time, so you always kind of want to end it close to where the eyebrow ends. Sometimes their, their natural hairline doesn't go all the way back to the end of the eyebrow. Sometimes you just kind of work it in. Um, so that's just kind of rule of thumb reference point. It works for a majority of people, but not for everyone. This is something that you need to assess uh, before you do a lineup on somebody. Me personally, uh, 
doing lineups is one of the most enjoyable parts for me as a barber. Uh, it's, I've always been a fan of uh, creating sharp edges, and when I got into barbering, that was one of the first things I used to look at. Is when some of my buddies would come with some of the sharpest hairlines, I'd be like, "Oh man!" So for me, I enjoy it. I've cre I, I personally love creating sharp 90, de 90 degree corners and just creating like nice curves on, on the beard. For me, I really enjoy that as a barber. There you go. Yeah. Okay, fresh. <laughs> so now we're gonna start with the back of the neck tapers, um, taper, line up as well. Typically you want to stay as natural to the hairline as possible, so you don't want to deviate. I'm not trying to create an angle that goes in. So whenever you line up the back of the neck, you always want to comb down and see if there's any hang-offs. And you always want to follow the natural line of like the neck. Right now I'm going to use the corner of the blade. No, right now I'm just, so, as like in the, the last video, whenever I do kind of like corners or any type of uh, lamps around the ear, I like to go use the, the corner, one of the corners of the, corner of the blade and just kind of in one swift movement, try to create like a nice round. So whenever I set the beard lineups, I like to start from the back. Uh, just kind of just push it in, try to keep it as natural as possible. Just similar to what we did in the, in the previous video is we like to kind of use the lips as reference points. So if you want as wide as possible, use the corner of the lip. If you, for the, where we start here, so we use this corner of the lip to be as wide as possible. We start here if you want to keep it like medium. And the in, indent here is we want to keep like the beard like the low for him. We like to keep it like right where the corner of the lip is. And we just point the end. Because in the previous video we faded it, and this one we're going to block it off and create like a nice point up here. So I'm going to angle the blade kind of top of the ear towards the corner of the mouth. So I'm going to be able to create that invisible line here. Then I'm going to use the corner of the blade and kind of curve it in a little bit. So whenever we do beer lineups, you always want to clean the hair on the top of the face because you don't want it to grow in all crazy. And this kind of keeps it consistent because it wouldn't be a point if we shaved down here and just lined it up and didn't clean the hair on top. It just kind of keeps it consistent, nice and clean. So most guys want it's like a nice clean cut. So we're going to comb the hair down with the mustache now. We're going to cut any of the hang offs here. I like to push a little bit of the hair out. I'm gonna grab any of these little excess hairs here because most guys hate that whenever you line up their beards and there's excess hair going into their mouth. No one likes that. And for the top of the beard here, I'm just gonna naturally just kind of bring this down. You wanna bring a lip down, bro? Thing on this side, you want to stick to the natural hairline. Want to comb the hair down right at the curve. We can use the corner of the blade. Same thing over here. We're gonna start them behind. Line up 
this part of the blade, right to the core of the lip. Use this corner, this corner to curve it in a little bit. You want to explain your like hand placement, positioning, so, stuff? So for me on this side, uh, and don't forget to explain that you're a lefty as well. Yes. So I'm a left-handed. Um, I'm left-handed. So whenever I do beard lineups on this side of the beard, whenever I do curves, it's, it's a lot more easier for me on his left side. So I go in and then I use the corner there. But when I come from the opposite side, it's a little bit more trickier to kind of uh, obtain the curve because then sometimes either you can go backwards, which could for some people feel a little awkward. So for me, I go down, so I follow the same line here, my left hand, and I bring it right around here, to, kind of towards the end of the eyebrow, and then I'll use this part of the blade, this corner of the blade, and I'll just kind of trace it, and I'll kind of go inwards this way. I feel more comfortable to uh, create the curve that way. But if you don't feel comfortable that way, you can create your line down here, and then you could start from your reference point and then curve it in like backwards as well if you're into that. That's more easier for you. For me personally, I haven't uh, uh, transitioned to a cord of this trimmer because uh, I feel like the power is inconsistent for me personally. Because for me, I like to have a liner that shaves and as well I can line with. Uh, that's just how I've been doing my thing for the past 10 years now. Uh, now I feel like with a rotary motor for by Andis, so they're both Andis, but I feel like this is more consistent power-wise when I go against the grain from my ball fades, ball tapers, and when I do my lineups, etc. I feel like the rotary motor on the cordless Andis doesn't quite do it for me yet. Uh, I feel like, especially because when I do shade downs, but it's really good for uh, when I do lineups. And you can't, uh, but yeah, that's it. I was gonna say like, yo, you can't skeleton it, but then I'm like, oh shit, mine's not even skeleton right now. Cause like my old one was skeleton. I was like, oh shit. Can't say that now, because I'm uh, yeah. Oh shit, man. God damn it, Jack! I should never be in front of a TV. Huh? Yo, it's it still recording. Mm -hmm. Alright, huh? Still recording. <laughs> shit. This is B-roll behind the scenes. Fuck. Mike's fucked. Mike's a fuck you. Look good, buds. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna try to like lighten up the taper a little bit on all dark spots with a thinning shear. So over here, like his hair bunches up, so I'm gonna kind of come in and kind of point cut into the, into the fade, on like parts where uh, the hair, where I see like bunches up a little bit. Or also what you could do is you could take the fine side of the comb as well to break up any of the bulk and just kind of go up with a thinning shear to kind of make it not look as heavy. A lot better. Same thing here. If you want to break up any of the bulk from like a taper, I prefer to go in with a little bit of thinning shear. And just go against the grain so it doesn't look so heavy. That's, you want it to blend real nice compared to leaving it very, very heavy and then it grows out like, like a mushroom. So right now I'm just kind of point cutting into the fade, breaking up any of the bulk, just to kind of break up because some of his hair actually grows really close together. So same thing here, here's the thin side of the comb. So now I'm gonna go in with my Andes foil shaver. Just like in the previous video, you always want to stay underneath your initial guideline. For him, we know it was the brow bone here towards here, so I'm not going to take it all the way up here. That's just what it makes sense. That I'm just making my life harder and creating uh, more guidelines. And might as well, since I'm on this side, it's like I'm going to take the hair on top of the cheek. And I'll clean a little bit of the hair up here as well.
Let's go, man. For me, I'm all about efficiency, so like if I'm already on the side, I might as well just shave it down. So just like in the previous video as well, uh, before I like to use my razor, I like to use my shaver first to kind of make my job a lot more easier, more efficient, more faster. So I'm taking down any of like, the loose hairs before I go through it and uh, razor the lineup. So for me with the tapers, I like to go right to the line to create a really sharp line. The thing about the, the foil shaver is like, you're not really gonna take much of the hair. Like if it's long, it needs to be like at a stubble for you to cut it with the, with, with, with the foil shaver. So you can go right to the line to stop there and it creates more of a crispier line and a taper that lasts a lot more longer. Yeah, so essentially when I use the, the, the shaver, when you take it down to a stubble, when you do the lineup, when you hit it with this, it just makes it pop a lot more. It gives a lot more contrast. Because uh, most people, they'll only use uh, the te like, a, like a, a liner, and for me, that's not enough. I like to kind of make my work stand out, especially the fade, so by making, by using the, the foil shaver, you can make it pop out a lot more. Because some people would just leave the taper like this and not use the foil shaver, but when you use a foil shaver, the fade lasts longer, it pops more, and it looks a lot better, in my, my opinion. Well, for me, it's a pet peeve as a new barber when, when the guys don't, let's say, like foil shave the top of the cheek whenever they're going to raise your hair. Because at the end of the day, it's going to grow out really, really crappy. So a pet peeve for me is like always make sure to go through with your foil shaver and get these like little spots because your client will never tell you um, tell you like how it grew out, but they'll always come back to you because they'll be like, yo, this guy did a little bit more to, to, to get the job done be like better, you know what I mean? So. Some, some shave gel just like in the last video as well I don't really like to put too too much and kind of drench the client's skin with it kind of makes my job a little bit more messier it, it uh, makes my life a little bit more harder to kind of see the line that I'm trying to create as well so when I uh, like to cut hair I like to use uh, clear shaving gel compared to the traditional shaving cream uh, reason being is like it's easy for you to kind of see your work whereas like with a cream typically like a white cream it kind of clouds where your lines are and with a clear shave gel you can kind of see where your lines are at so when you use the razor it's a lot more you be a lot more precise with your lineup so right now using a hot towel pretty much we use the hot towel to help soften up the hairs and make the shaving process a lot more smoother a lot less irritation for the client and it's kind of helped to make the client feel a lot more comfortable. Uh, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, shaving is a relaxing process. Uh, so I like to do it. It helps relax my client. And uh, yeah, it just makes my job a lot more easier as well. So right now I'm just going to put it in the straight razor. Yeah, so for me personally, when I, so with a, with a, with a hot towel, I have to kind of get in the ear a bit, just to kind of clean up any like hair from like the haircut and to kind of go around the ear. Make it a little more comfortable for the client, almost like a little bit of a massage there. <laughs> So 
So if, when I like to start shaving, I can start behind the back of the, the ear here. How you doing, bro? Thanks, bro. So essentially, you want to use. So whenever you do a straight razor shave or use a straight razor, you want to hold the the razor at a forty-five degree angle, not at a ninety-degree angle, to make it softer. Um, makes it a lot more smoother. And also, you want to use like short, consistent strokes to create like your lines. I don't know, this is a little tricky to get in there. Just like in the last video too, I like to go back down on the side of the, the side of the mustache. It's a lot more easier to kind of get in compared to going backwards this way. Then his nose kind of gets in the way, and you can't really get in there. So instead of going this way, which makes it a lot more irritating for the client, I prefer to go back in on the side of the mustache compared to this side, where it's really easy to access in this way. Other than going back head on this side and I'm pressing down on the nose and I can't get a consistent cut inside here. Alright. So now we're doing the front of the hairline here. So for me, yeah, so whenever you do uh, use a straight razor, you don't want to push the skin too much because then you just end up changing the how that line looks so you always want the blade to do a majority of the work for you you just want it to glide on the skin so uh, once again at a 45 degree angle hold boom and also what I like to do with tapers I like to kind of go behind the ear push the ear down at a 45 degree angle and you get the back part of like the, the hook over here and also you can push the, the ear down as well and use the top of the blade. Get in there, it makes that taper really, really stand out a lot. Makes it really pop. So another thing that I like to do as well is like, I know how we use the shaver here, but I also like to go against the, against the grain with the blade. This makes it make this pop that much more. And it helps to kind of straighten that line a bit and make it really sharp.
I think we're good. This is the tada. <laughs> A Rod style. Shit, you're fresh, bro. <laughs> Have you watched the A Rod videos? Ooh, shit. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> So now we're going to uh, proceed to clean the back of the neck. Pet peeve number two, when, we when the barbers don't clean the back of the neck correctly, I guess you could say. So for me personally, I like to go with straight razor, all these little hairs. My rule of thumb, it's never a haircut until the five star foil hits the back of the neck. Always want to make sure to always go down to the neckline. And sometimes you gotta hit it in multiple directions to catch the hair. Because most barbers, they'll just kind of just use the liner and call it a day. It's like, nah, you gotta use the anise foil shaver, man. You gotta get right down to the skin. The client's gonna recognize that. And like, oh, didn't grow in as fast this time. Same thing with the neck. Is it? Go with the liner. Boom, boom, boom. We're gonna go one with the anise foil shaver. Just like in the last video, I like to apply the aftershave on an extra. I like it dab into the skin. I feel like it's more gentleman-like. And less like ratchet when you're when you're uh, spraying guys in the face with a uh, with aftershave, and getting it all in their eyes and breathing it in. It's not a good look. Not a good look. So I like to dab it in. Make sure to do a pass on all the areas you use the straight razor or you use the shaver. And we're gonna use some powder. So now we got Jag looking right. So we just pretty much did a number six on top with a high ball taper. We did a beard line up with a number two, two and a half on the side. We freehanded the middle with a uh, zero guard on the mustache. We hit it right, right above the Adam's apple here. And we did a, a back taper as well. There we go. All right, there you have it. It's Michael Jerio from Everson's Barbershop from Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for, next, for our next tutorial video. That was a long one, was it? All right, now you gotta help me out. You gotta help me. All right, yeah, I see you. All right, thanks for the cut. Yeah, man. Respect.